Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the third part fights episode number uh, six and seven reaction. Okay, the previous episode was the end of the first mini arc we had, and uh, we the, the episode before that we saw that Rupan died, but it's it was I'm, I was pretty sure obviously like Rupan cannot die like you know like <laughs> he obviously he cannot die. So there's something going on and I tried to guess what was going on. I guess that one of those guys was uh, Goemon, uh, the other one was Jigen who shot them. And I also guessed that uh, Ami probably is not in on this, that's why he, she was surprised. There's a few things that I got correctly, a few things that I wasn't able to like, you know, land my guess on. Uh, the first thing obviously uh, it was Jigen, that was completely correct. I saw the way he threw away the cigarette, that was like a you know, pure giveaway and uh, the other one was uh fujiko which i wasn't able to guess correctly i, I did have a suspicion i was like will, will goemon be able to you know like control a, uh, like you know like the drone so it turns out that was fujiko and also um the girl like an army she was in on this she knew about it that's also another thing that i wasn't able to correctly guess but either way, uh, most of my guesses were correct and it and did ended up happening with the way I kind of envisioned it. So there you go. And they faked Lupin's death so that Lupin can, like, you know, Lupin's popularity can die down. Everyone will forget about him and that did end up happening. People started to forget about him little by little. And also, uh, the money that they got from the dead game went to Fujiko because Fujiko helped them out, you know, business partnership. And they were able to um get that guy that guy who was like you know like running the marco polo thing and he has <laughs> he has like you know he's under uh bars now uh, behind bars now and uh yeah so also zenigata also got to know that rupan is alive so everything ended up pretty well there's also in the end we had like a little conversation of rupan and fujiko which again shows us how everything is business between them i do wonder why i'm sure that i'll get to know as we get more into the uh, season and another thing did end up happening is um Ami decided to go to a boarding school you know she she probably wants to live his uh live her life normally the way she hasn't been able to live up until now so yeah so there you go now Arupan and his gang is going to another um another like you know treasure hunt or whatever that's where it ended so let's see what happens in this episode this is episode number six let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles on the time right here Think it to whichever is a preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go All right. Oh, what's happening? What's this? What's happening here? Wait, this art style. What's going on here? Who was one plus one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a good password.
Wow. Damn. Oh, the police. Wait, what? What's he doing here? <laughs> yeah. Rupan's the answer? <laughs> Rupan was a... What? Okay, this episode is... Started in an interesting way. The, the art style is like the... Season 1 and 2 that we, we had. <laughs> oh Ah, wow, it's, it's gold? What? Yo, what is this? Kinko, <laughs> Kinko, okay Ah Right, let's see. Oh, interesting. Wow. Ah. No, it probably. No, he he's not zero. Oh, wait, what? Oh my god. Okay, demonstrate it. <laughs> ah, so they're going to... Yeah. Okay, let's see it. Like, what it does. No, Rupan can act dumb, you know, like he, he can. I don't think this is a good idea. Like she can, he can act. Oh, it's going to uh, detect. Okay, never mind. I thought they were going to ask questions or something. All right. Yeah, if their IQ is zero, how did they, they make it? Nice. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, Fujiko's here. <laughs> he cannot. <laughs> Don't do requests. Yes. <laughs> Is his teeth giving him trouble again? Yeah, it's cavity. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh does he not have okay there you go he has <laughs> oh no, he doesn't. Okay, there he has. 
Wow, they're bringing up all the. Ah! Well, now you have to go and. Yeah, break the safe. <laughs> Go one doesn't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> wow, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Alright, now time to switch on your mental. <laughs> oh, is it going down? <laughs> They're just waiting and seeing. I'm gonna help him. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, a little bit more? No. <laughs> oh, no. Come back, Rupan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a oh wow. <laughs> oh, wow. No, if you use him, you can probably open the yeah, I think that's probably what Rupan is going to try now. <laughs> no, wait, this one thing defeats his whole purpose. You need someone to have IQ zero to open this. I don't think anyone has IQ zero in all the customers will be in the bank. So you need these guys always to be there to open the bank, uh, like uh, the safe. Otherwise, you cannot. <laughs> Too smart. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, that's how. <laughs> oh wow that's how okay i guess that's also another way my god <laughs> oh no ah <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Got his brain for oh my god. Wow. Uh Okay. It's still a hundred. It's still <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, it's it's going really low low now. All right. <laughs> Okay, a little bit more. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like this is the first time I've seen Fujiko and Go uh, Jigen laughing so much. Like, you know, at it, like, Go Jigen just hates Fujiko. Wow, suffering from success. <laughs> they are just giving him them ice cream for this? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Hey everyone's just waiting They're like alright let's see Oh, it's going down quick. <laughs> we should cry. <laughs> oh my god. Resistance. <laughs> what is oh my god? Hey. <laughs> Yo <laughs> Even I can do it <laughs> All right <laughs> Okay Ooh. Uh. <laughs> He's gonna go and give him a whack on the head or something. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, that's better. What? <laughs> okay. Wait, what? Okay, let's see. He's gonna do something else. It's going back again. There you go. What? Oh. <laughs> 
Oh. Oh, it's going to break it like that. <laughs> it's going to break it, like overheat it or something like that. There you go. Yeah, it's completely broken now. Zero. Yeah, exactly. Ah, it goes back to okay. What? <laughs> Wait, did he actually? Why <laughs> <laughs> not? Yeah. Probably not, but I, I guess. <laughs> wow, that's rude. <laughs> Oh. Wait, was this an advertisement? Oh no. Was that an advertisement? Oh really? <laughs> Let's communicate with cats. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh god wow this was okay you know what this episode reminded me of um uh, you know uh, those i wouldn't call them kids show but like shows for the like in the younger ages where they kind of like you know like you know, kind of have like a fun little uh, section like for example like let me just take uh, uh, an example Doraemon for example uh, you know like the way they have like uh, obviously Doraemon is not for kids I would say it's for like a younger audience and also adults also see do like you know watches those shows so the way they have the style where you know like they teach us try to teach us something as well you know give us like a little moral and uh, kind of explain everything in like a more um clearer way for the younger audience to understand what's going on and have this fun little like you know thing happening like where like you know something like you know like something crazy is happening but they kind of make it a lot more uh, fun and entertaining for example um uh, like let's let's take like a like a like here for example in in this like you know in this episode we see Rupa is trying to steal something you know like rob a bank like obviously that okay that's it that in itself they kind of uh, made it like a fun little thing and made it like a lot lighthearted 
and uh, you know like a lot entertaining and and like you know kind of added like you know some uh, dumb little portions for example just hit rupan and unless and until his uh, like you know brain power goes down like these type of crazy unrealistic things they kind of add with little like you know uh, and and even like stuff which are more serious in real world they kind of kind of like you know make it more light hearted and kind of play it off like that and uh, you know something like 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 that uh, so that type of a thing they do and uh, it it's entertaining for us as children to see that and uh, i it it reminded me of something like that you know those those uh, shows which are like more catered towards younger audiences like here we can see everyone here is obviously they they're trying to steal us, like you know money from a safe but it was done in like a such a lighthearted and fun manner it felt like oh my god what's going on they're all like you know like doing stuff like this it's funny entertaining and stupid at the same time and the whole thing of oh let's hit him unless and until his brain power goes down you know the the actual thing is like you know they're actually hitting him like you know doing vi like you know kind of uh, like uh, not like kind of being violent on him but it, that in itself is done in a very light hearted way like uh, younger like kind of audiences people who sh see shows uh, uh, like Doraemon maybe Tom and Jerry stuff like that we also have stuff like that for example in uh, Tom and Jerry or like you know shows like that like someone gets struck by a car you know and they kind of fall down and get hurt a lot but then the next second they kind of get up and start running away you know, that type of a thing you know the things that they're showing us quite serious but they do it in a lighthearted way which we kind of have fun looking at it like uh, yeah so there you go that kind of a thing they do and they did it over here as well which was kind of funny to see <laughs> because this show in itself is quite serious most of the time you know the serious situations are really serious in rupan so them suddenly doing something like that was kind of funny to see and obviously them trying to do it like that made quite a few hilarious combinations for example fujiko and jigen we saw them actually talking to each other <laughs> actually talking to each other like jigen is not just you know like just uh you know just what can i say like avoiding fujiko trying not to talk about her or like you know like or like it's not that jigen is not happy but here we see them then actually talking like friends so this type of like you know, hilarious combination kind of brought up just because they did something like this. All right, this whole episode was basically um, I'm not quite. Uh, I'm guessing this was like a like a what do you call it? Like a uh, a break episode where they just give you like a to kind of settle down. You know, after that arc we had, it's just something like that. And obviously, this is in no way part of this. Like you know, timeline or storyline or whatever. This is just a just an episode, you know, like for the sake of it, a fun little episode. Like that's why we see Fujiko and everyone just having fun like this. Uh, while in the original, like in the previous episode, we see Fujiko and Rupa not even talking and talking about like business partners and all that. While here in this episode, something like that. So obviously, this is not part of that story. This is just a separate, uh, you know, like separate episode just to have fun. So. Another thing that was interesting is like the art style here. It uh, obviously it, it kind of reminded me of the old art style, you know, in uh, season one, two, and three. But at the same time, it was not like that. The art style and the animation did seem modern. It, the the style was like you know like that, but the animation and everything was modern. So that was interesting to see, you know, like with the simplistic character designs and the uh, you know like the backgrounds and everything drawn in a very simplistic way. <laughs> yeah and you know the, the cutesy style this was the cutesy style you could say like you know fujiko goemon lupan jigen everyone like you know was drawn like in a cute cutesy manner and uh, that was kind of fun to see <laughs> and uh, the, the story of this ep uh, episode was basically these two who who's who were getting evicted because of like you know like their dad not being able to pay the loans or whatever and they decided to make a safe which is going to make use of the fact that Rupan is too smart, so he cannot open it. So people who are like you know, Rupan is like 300 IQ. So people in that level will not be able to open it. People at like you know who are like at zero IQ will only be be able to open it. For example, this guy. But uh, like I said, like and obviously this episode is supposed to be taken in a fun manner. 
but there's one thing that I am still thinking about. Like th that would mean that obviously like this these two brothers are probably the only ones who has like zero IQ. You know, I don't think anyone in this world has zero IQ. So these two will have to stay in the bank forever, all the time. You know, unless and until you want to open the safe. Otherwise, it'll defeat the purpose. The the bank where the safe won't open when other when when it's not zero IQ. So they'll always need to be. <laughs> In the bank or they need to find someone like them who are also zero iq <laughs> which in itself is a pretty tough job but like i said if this is this episode you don't think about those type of like you know uh things that make sense or make doesn't make sense you just have you're supposed to have fun with this so no need to go into more details into all of that <laughs> this is just an episode to have fun and uh, now another thing is obviously I'm, I'm kind of curious how they were able to make the safe if the IQ is zero. Like I think one of the uh, audiences, they were just waiting in the like in a conference or whatever. They asked the same question. They're like, "How did you make this one if you're zero IQ?" <laughs> like I guess like you know in the end they kind of said like you know the um, the difference between a genius and a fool is like very paper thin or something like that. I guess by that logic maybe they were also able to make the safe because they are fools while Lupin is a genius and the the uh, boundary between them is very paper thin so they could also make something like this maybe you know like something like that I don't know but either way they made this thing and now <clears throat> I for the moment for at the beginning I thought they were it's something like you're going to like you know the safe was going to ask questions or something you need to answer and that's how you're going to uh, detect the IQ no if it was like that that would have made this a lot more easier because rupan could have easily inputted the wrong questions uh, wrong answers and he could have easily gotten a very low valuation of iq but obviously it's not that easy <clears throat> it actually uh, detects your brain waves and automatically detects your iq so you cannot trick it like that you actually need to be zero iq so that's what made this a more difficult problem and obviously rupan at the beginning <laughs> um <laughs> Like we could see like Rupan was pretty, you know, like pretty you could say like kind of happy about one fact that they're saying how he's too smart, you know. Like he's like, yeah, I'm 300 IQ, like you know, like enough person, like you know, obviously it'll be more difficult for me. And you know, he was kind of happy about that, but at the same time, this is a challenge actually against him. So yeah, at first he was like, I'm not gonna do it, but then one after the other, everyone starts bringing up their debts like you know the debts that he, that he has on all of them like you know fujiko has like some kind of a some tea or coffee something like that she said like you, you owe me for the coffee yeah and uh goemon like you know had like you know owed him for the rice and all that jigen also owed him money and in the end he's like all right fine i'm gonna do it and uh, <clears throat> now lupan the first attempt that he tries to do is he tries to actually become dumb on him himself because this down probably makes his brain empty completely and like kind of uh, becomes dumb like that and he's able to do it but up until a certain point 35 it stops so the plan fails he goes to the safe to open it but at 35 it stops so <clears throat> yeah he couldn't do anything about that <coughs> Then the next plan was to actually make Rupan dumb on his own. And the first thing that <laughs> I love about <laughs> like Jigen's the first uh, idea that Jigen had here is like, oh Fujiko, like you know, just trip down. <laughs> Rupan is going to get become an idiot if that happens. <laughs> and oh my god. And uh, yeah. And then in the end they decide to just beat him up little by little, uh, lowering his uh, IQ level. <laughs> like he kept beating him up and like you know doing some like you know the, like weird stuff for example feeding him certain kind of food uh like you know making him run and all that and his brain power went lower lower and lower and yeah and in the end we see them actually like it's so funny like everyone was actually waiting for them to come all the reporters and all they're just waiting and they come you know with rupan all bandaged <laughs> And everyone's just waiting. They're like, "All right, this is a, it's as if like a like a like a like a show is happening, like a kind of a show in real time is happening. Like everyone's just waiting. Like it's not like <laughs> like nobody cares if he gets captured or not. Everyone wants to see if they are able to like accomplish the goal. And everyone's just waiting. 
and uh, put it on him it stops at one like you know you cannot make it zero and that guy uh, brother the old elder brother he was like you know oh and before that like there's that one scene where we see fujiko just thinking about all the different training techniques that he went through <laughs> you know one of those uh like you know typical scenes which were like you know flashback scenes that happens before <laughs> before a very um you know important like you know something like you know, for example if someone is going like to fight in a tournament or something you know like like always there's one person who's just waiting in the audience and just they're like ah oh, you went through so much you know like these six months you went through heaven and hell and it it, it was crazy you know like they, they show like little montages of what they went through like you know but like like just like you know like i don't know like the different training techniques that they went through they all show that one after the other and all the different uh hardships that they went through and then they like you know show us the main character now completely ready to take on the challenge and yeah fujiko had that moment for a moment <laughs> and they, <laughs> still it was not successful like you know, at one it stopped and the, the elder brother was like, <clears throat> Rupan, I understand, you know, what you went through. Don't worry, like, you know, I'm going to <laughs> help you. <laughs> I'll, I'll act in your stead and open it, you know, like, and he's like, like, yeah, like, let's do it, guys. Like, you know, like, he's tried so much. He's just went up until the end. Let us just give the win to him. <laughs> and oh my God, like stupid stuff like that. And then Rupan realizes, Rupan's like, all right, you know what, what I'm going to do? <clears throat> the uh the difference of a genius and a fool is very paper thin so i'm going to like you know like overheat this thing and make it not understand what's going on so the upper threshold was 300 he started eating fish and his brain power started increasing it was a particular type of fish i remember fujiko saying which increases your brain power and uh like you know his brain power went from 300 to 1 and as soon as that happened obviously the 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 machine couldn't support it it's uh, upper threshold is 300 so it overflowed and it malfunctioned and it's uh, like you know it became zero and the safe opened <laughs> and by doing that ruban himself as well malfunctioned you know like as it went over <laughs> oh like you know it started overflowing the the brain power so the, the tr zenigata tries to capture him in this time but obviously before that happens <clears throat> uh, fujiko and everyone gets him and runs away now in the end uh, the true brothers they're like all right you know what like you know like we tried our best but yeah nothing we can do about it but then all the reporters and everything everyone was like okay okay like you know how, how like you, know, you were successful in some way or the other so started asking them for interviews and all that and they probably becomes famous yeah and then they like you know start doing like those fish can sales and all that and started having more money and became successful so there you go <laughs> and while and while this is happening rupan is just like, mad at them there he's like what the hell did you guys do you know take quick advantage of my situation <laughs> and yeah that's how it ended you know like in the end rupan again tries to grab fujiko but fujiko just hammers him on the head so there you go that was this episode a fun little episode uh an episode to have a little uh, you know like a like a little what do you call it like a little break you know give us a little break on all the crazy thing that happened and i'm guessing this one the next episode episode number seven yeah episode number seven we'll be starting another story or maybe something like that we'll see but either way that was fun you know that was a funny episode like i said it, it reminded me of those uh shows that i used to watch which you know i like kind of had like a very light-hearted feeling like doraemon shin chan all those shows and uh, like you know like and the like and, and, and most of the a uh, few of the episodes they also have like a little moral to it stuff like that uh, and the important stuff or the serious stuff that they even tackled were done in a very light-hearted manner which like you know made us laugh and all that so yeah and i, I it was kind of interesting to see the uh, like, you know, the change in character design the like, you know the, the cutesy style that we see here and uh, you know all that stuff and seeing the different characters have like a more friendly personality as like you know jigen and fujiko talking and then like having fun and do, doing weird stuff and uh, yeah that was fun all right let's begin the next episode episode number seven so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three 
two, one, go. Episode two, there you go. That was the first one. This is the second second arc or whatever. <clears throat> Who's grave? What? Hmm. Custom. Green. <laughs> yeah. Higher. Return. Wait. Okay. Was he also a thief? Oh, forgery. Okay, okay. So, all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mr. B. Three days. That's okay. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, how much is in there? Wait, what? Oh, I thought it was money. Oh. Hmm. Replica. <laughs> so yeah, he's forgery, master of forgery, so it makes sense as a replica. All right. Oh. Mm. His name is Albert, okay. Mr. B. Oh, this is Mr. B? Wait a minute. So, he, they were talking about this guy. Okay. What in the hell? <laughs> All right. That really caught me off guard. <laughs> well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow, that was successful. That happened too quickly. All right, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Damn, this is some. And the fingerprints? Okay, hopefully this matches. Okay, nice. I thought maybe he changed it after that or something. That would have been crazy. Okay, there you go. It's identified. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Yep, rich person, you know. That's such a shame. Black hole. <laughs> oh. Gives unknown Picasso. Ooh. Well, yeah. Oh, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Damn, that's crazy. So the forgery of the signature in itself was... <laughs> was just, yeah. So technically, it, it that is Gaston's, um, no? Oh, but they even have the Mona Lisa. William. Okay. Game. Wait, what? Well, maybe. Uh... Yeah. So what did his grandson did his grandson also no wait of a lie that sold too hard oh Who knows him? <laughs> okay. Oh. Wait. Did he not? 
Ok. What in the- oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Damn, typical trapdoor, you know, like, you have. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh! Wait! Then what about the grandson? Oh, Gaston told him, okay. Ah, uh, that's why. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So he made him a deposit box. <laughs> yeah. Is it about <laughs> Rupan? Yeah. So yeah, like I said. He made uh, Mr. B a, a, just a deposit box to keep the thing safe and then hired Rupan to be, get it back. Oh, oh my god. Wait, then what about the whole grandson? What's up with that? Oh god, someone's following them. Great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they also <laughs> Oh my god, god yo <laughs> This guy Alright let's see Yeah he's also gonna do the same thing Oh boy, he's going to he's going to come through the other side. Uh. <laughs> no. There you go. Oh no. Wait, what happened to Jingen? What? what? Why did he come here? He was... He was supposed to follow Jingen. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. Great. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he did not tell him on phone. Yeah. 
Iya. Hmm. Yeah, it was cat. <laughs> oh boy. What the hell are you? That's definitely a fake one. What what are you? That was definitely a fake one. Or maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure Jigen is here somewhere watching. <laughs> Whoa. Like I'm pretty sure. Let's see, I'm pretty sure that one is fake. The package. Let's see. Oh boy, I'm pretty sure it's fake. Let's see. Like, obviously, Lupin is not going to bring the original one. Oh, wait. Oh, that's why they wanted it. Okay, this is the original one. So maybe Jigen is waiting somewhere. Yep, there you go. Our Lupin, okay. Oh, that was Jigen! Wait! Is that Jigen? Oh, wait, no. Yep, that's Jigen. <laughs> yeah, no funny business. Wait, what the? What was that? The black no. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why was it inside? Yeah, wh how did he get involved in this? Yeah, he did give them seven days. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, this place is. Wait, is that a sh <laughs> Wow. Mm. Why? 
Oh no, wait. That was someone else. Oh my god. Yeah, that was someone else. Wait, so it, it was one of those guys who we saw? Maybe there's a hint inside it. Oh my god. That's a, there's a hint inside it. So he knew that he's going to find out sooner or later. So after that, open the Albert. Oh, he knows them. Okay, Albert is that guy, isn't it? Um, like that guy, the guy with the monocle, who said that oh he's going to come back. I think so. I'll have to check the name out again. Okay, well, damn. So <laughs> someone actually tricked Rupan uh, by, like you know, like by having a disguise, like you know, like Rupan is supposed to be the. You know, that, like the, the best in disguises. And he got tricked by, okay. <sighs> and he also knew that obviously Lupin would know, get to know that uh, that was a disguise sooner or later. So that's why he also said like, oh, after I die, uh, read a prayer from there. Which is the hint to find out what to do next, I'm guessing. Okay, makes sense. I was thinking, like, just like Dupin said, like, why does Gaston has, have, like, you know, that interest in this? It's not Gaston, it's someone else. That guy. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so this episode, we start, like, you know, at the beginning, we see uh, this guy. I think his name is Albert. You know what? Let me check his name out first. Okay, yeah, that was his name, Albert. So, uh, at the first uh, scene, we see Albert in, uh, like, you know, in the cemetery. And, okay, so that was Gaston. It, it makes sense now, whose who's, uh, grave that was. And that's when he says, like, you know, I want to see um, the look on his face or something like that. He says his reaction so there you go okay now next uh we the whole gaston scene com comes up where gaston comes and he's like uh, he's the master of forgery and he and rupan had a, a lot of connection before you know and uh, that's why rupan has a you know like like has a respect for him and is going to do whatever he's going to tell him to. so he's like oh i have a job for you I need to hire you. I need to retrieve. Uh, I need you to retrieve something from me, from Mr. B. I think or something like that. He said, "Yeah." And uh, so you know, obviously because Mr. B B for black hole, and uh, he it's impossible to bring something out of his safe. That's why he decided to hire Rupa. And uh, he's like. Yeah, I need to bring it uh, for, for me. Here's your advance. And he gives him like the Bible, the Napoleon's Bible. It's also a forgery. Also, another thing he says is like, I'm going to give you. Uh, oh, first he says, how many days will you need? He says three days, Rupan says. And he says, I'm going to give him four days, which makes sense so much now. Why he did that? He wanted him to get the book and figure something out on his own. And obviously, then he'll get to know that Gaston is dead and uh, go to his grave and then realize that uh, you're supposed to see the book and i'm pretty sure there there's a few other things that he plans on rupan like you know plans have have plans for for lupan for and that's why he gave him like seven days you know because if he gave if he said something like all right three days all right okay three days then this would have probably not happened because rupan would have gotten it and brought it straight to him you know which would defeat the whole purpose so that's why even though rupan said three days he said no i'm giving him seven days because he wanted wanted him to have that extra few days 
so that obviously Rukman is a curious person. If he has four more Dre's days extra, he would obviously get by the end he will get curious and try to find out what's up with the book, which will result in furthering his plot, whatever plot he has, we still don't know, and uh, he wants that to happen. So okay. Now he also gives him that like you know that I won't say hint, yeah a hint you could say. Uh, where he says like when I pass away read the prayer from it for me obviously which which means like you know when he'll realize that he's actually dead open the book or something like that obviously at that moment we did not know that's what he was meaning now next we get to see Mr. B and this part genuinely surprised me I was not <laughs> expecting that to be Rupan <laughs> uh, you know in Fujiko's disguise but yeah, she, she, he easily was able to get Gaston's like, you know, uh, ret, like, you know, retina thing. And that's why he was wearing the glasses to record it. And uh, the fingerprints and all that. So there you go. He just dips by the end of it, like, you know, probably <laughs> to the window or whatever of the bathroom. And uh, yeah, go to the place, the safe and uh, typical, like, you know, like normal house. But the bookcase is, you know, it's like a secret thing in the bookcase. And uh, yeah, he opened the, uh, the, the secret uh, door, went down, obviously fingerprint scanner, iris, uh, you know, like eye scanner, everyone's, everything is there. And for a moment, I, I don't know why, but there's a part of me where I was thinking, oh my God, uh, is something going to happen? You know, did they change it or something like that? Um, but yeah, never mind, nothing like that happened. <laughs> and uh, yeah opened the the door went in and oh boy there's a lot of uh you know like pictures and stuff like that so a lot of like you know, billions and billions of things worth and so basically what this guy does is just buy something that catches his fancy and forgets about it and then again buy something and <laughs> yeah like this this type of a thing and uh, like obviously like I mean he's, he's this shows how much rich he is you know like imagine buying like a billion dollar painting and then just like ah I, I've like I've had enough of it just store it in the storeroom that type of a you know <laughs> attitude but either way uh, what they were supposed to find here is Gaston's um a picture an unpublished picture I think that's what he said uh, of Picasso previously unknown Picasso that's never been on public display and he says that this is actually something that his grandson grandkid drew and what he did is just did the signature you know not Picasso and he's a master of forgery so it actually ended up everyone thinking like oh this is a genuine one so like that's how good a forgery he does so that's why you know Gaston got it and just put it in the storeroom so and that's this is why he wanted this back now here at this moment I had so many questions in my head I'm like yeah like I can understand what is happening but there's like so many things that pops the questions that pops up after this number one why why does Gaston want him to bring it back to him number uh, two the whole thing that you know like it comes up later on that this is actually the fake uh, like, you know is it actually the fake one like you know that kind of question and uh, you know like why why uh, you know like we also get to know how he used uh, uh, Mr. B as a deposit box and got it back why the reason why you know like why does he want the picture back we get to know the reason later on but there's there's so many questions that came up here and i was generally really, uh, quite confused but by the end after seeing what happened in this episode uh, a lot of things are clear to me by the end like you know i, I can understand where the story is going because uh, the way this story started is you know like what anime and shows does like you know they kind of give us information which makes no sense at the beginning you know and to kind of uh, build up the suspense and then they uh, little by little go into the plot and little by little reveal stuff which makes you able to connect the previous information that is given to you and you're like ah so that's what that was you know 
This is that type of style of storytelling, as far as I could gather. And that's probably why this, like, you know, like at, at the beginning, I was like, okay, something is going on, but I'm not quite clear on what's going on. But by the end of this episode, uh, a lot of things kind of got connected and I can kind of understand what's going on here. So, um, okay, now next uh, we see, okay, DGSC, uh, what, what is this? This is like, a, like an organization, like the ICPO you know something like that i'm guessing so okay now so oh here we go directorate general for external security that that's the full form i'm guessing all right now, there's quite a few things happening. Like I said, there's a few things that's still confusing me a little bit. So there's, there's two party involved in this, the DGSE and this Albert guy. So, oh, wait a minute. Okay, uh, as far as I could understand, so Albert uh, put Rupan into f bringing that, um, that picture out and obviously inside the picture was that uh, that that wallet or whatever where all the information about the dgsc all the bad things that they did was there that's why the director uh, the, the the head of that like you know dgsc director guliam guliam i think that's his name yeah uh, guliam no wait you know what let me hear the pronunciation Gyom. okay Gyom. uh so yeah, this, this guy, the Guillaume guy, he obviously doesn't want, like, you know, like as soon as he got to know that that picture is out, you know, he started sweating probably. He's like, oh my God, inside the picture, there's all those things. If it falls in the other hands, like I'll be screwed. That's why he decided to put Lupin in, like, you know, like kind of follow Lupin and get it back from him. So Albert made Lupin go there, steal it. And this uh, Guillaume guy, he obviously is getting, starts getting scared. And tries to get the picture back but Rupan has like you know like you know just was able to um, uh, go against that and ended up getting the picture for himself and then Rupan felt suspicious about what is going on decides to go and meet Gaston and that's when he realizes that Gaston is dead it was someone else the uh, the book the hint Albert was written and he realized it was Albert and then we get to know that Ruban probably knows Albert there's a connection okay so that's what's happening so in total there's three party involved here Albert um the, this DGSC and uh, Rupan's party so three three groups still involved in this okay you know what let me read the dialogue uh, when Albert was talking in the phone. Okay, um, I see. So the Directorate General for External Security involved, Director Gyomu has probably sent them. All right. Well, now we know who wanted it. Oh, they did not know who wanted it. Okay, so Albert was also not confirmed that, you know, he probably knew that something is up with that thing, but he did not know what's like, you know, who is going to try to get it. That's why he wanted to test the waters or something like that. And that's how he's, he's now he's saying like, okay, well, now we know who wanted it. Okay, what should we do, director? The case is clearly a police matter. An intelligence agency. Oh, they're an intelligence agency. Okay, okay. Uh, getting involved is overstating their authority. Let them have their fun. The more pieces in play, the more exciting it gets. And the other guy, I don't know who that guy is. Talking shops uh, early, okay. No, just discussing the game. Okay, and that's where it's okay. Now, another thing pops up in this whole situation is that Rupan says that this looks too much like the real Picasso. The composition makes it okay, okay. All that stuff so he's saying that this is this isn't this supposed to be made by gaston's grandkid and he just slapped the uh, signature onto it 
so why does it look so similar and uh, the fact it looks so much like the real world is weird uh, uh, uh Jigan says maybe it's coincidence the smells a little too strong for that okay all that and uh, then they decide to go to that that art like a you know, specialist and gives it to him and uh, this guy knows rupan obviously because rupan probably does business with him and uh, rupan is like oh i want to know something about this and he just he doesn't even see it he kind of looks at it and he's like ah that's that's that has no artistic value it's trash and uh, rupan says even with picasso's signature on it and he's like fine let's go down Puts, clicks on that that button trap door or whatever kind of pops up and he goes in and uh, okay now we see this guy has a huge collection even more rivaling mr b's and he's like don't compare me to that person you know i have artistic value and sense <laughs> now he says like i was the one who sold this to mr b at the request of gaston okay request of gaston so this is gaston's grandkid drew it he did the uh, signature and he told uh oh he probably put that thing inside it that wallet thing with all the misdeeds inside it and uh, told mr like you know sold it to mr b why he did that obviously he wanted that to be in a safe space you know like i said he used mr b as a deposit box because his uh, like you know like place is just like a, like a, like you know like a very secure safe anything that goes in cannot never comes out so it's the most safest place he that's why he just used him and obviously he knows he as soon as he sees a picture he just loses interest just keeps it there so obviously he wouldn't find that thing that is hidden inside it so that's what he did okay makes sense so he like you know, his grandson did the picture he used his Picasso signature, decided to sell it to Mr. B. Mr. B probably brought like a, a person who like, you know, authenticates the, uh, oh no, he told, gave it to him, this guy, you know, and told him to sell it to Mr. B. Okay, yeah. And uh, Mr. B buys it from this guy and keeps it in his place. Obviously that thing is safe now. Now, to bring it out, he probably would have hired Rupan for it, but obviously he ended up dying. So instead of him going, Albert in his disguise came and decided to hire Rupan to bring it out. And he has some other plan. Albert has some other plan, which we don't know what his plan is. And yeah, that's what he says. Like, you know, the thing that he buys never sees the light of day again. And what if you need it back? And that's why, you know, in the end, Jigen is like, oh, that's why, you know, he needed someone not jigen sorry that guy says like you know he needed someone who can bring it out of that black hole and you pretty much know who it is and rupan kind of smiles all right now they're outside and obviously the dgsc their people are following them and like a chase scene happens here and obviously uh, rupan and jigen doesn't know why they're following them the reason and all that so you know they try to run away and like a chase scene happens and like tries to make them like you know lose their direction but these guys are pretty persistent and in the end, uh, Lupin ends up throwing the pot on top of the other guy's head. He goes unconscious. The other guy comes and points the gun at him. Jigen goes and, uh, like, you know, hits him, makes him fall unconscious. Lupin finds the phone, calls the main guy, Gom, Gyomu, I think, yeah, that's his name. And uh, he's like, oh, why are you after this? And he's like, so let's do a trade, you know, if you really want this. Now obviously like Rupan is not a fool, he's not just going to come with empty handed with like and just hand the thing over to them. So he had a plan. Obviously this Guillaume guy, he, did not, he doesn't know Rupan like that. He probably thought oh this will be enough. But no. As soon as Rupan put down the, the, the picture, the thing, I knew something was up with that. It was either fake or something else is going on. Uh, but turns out it was not fake because he had some other plans. He actually had the original one there put it down there and uh like you know obviously this was jigan in this guys and that was the whole plan you know fool him to believe that he got the original one he did end up getting the original one because all the others started pointing their gun at him and Rupan or jigan here runs away and uh, this guy goes back to his car you know and obviously he's thinking like oh i'm safe now 
opens the thing and cuts open the thing and gets the 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 original wallet or whatever it is in it so that's why Rupan that was Rupan's plan to put in the original art over there and make him uh, fall under a false like you know security that oh I have the original thing now no one can do anything to me and he'll go back to his car or whatever and open it and try to see what is in and uh, like you know the Rupan will realize what's up with that picture because he was not sure what was up with the picture so obviously the person who will know the best about this is the person who's trying to get it you know so this guy he just used him as a tool to get to see what's up with the picture and as soon as he cut it open Rupan realized like okay that's that's what's up with it and uh, points a gun at him and he's like um okay and he's like uh what is this okay where is that part first hand it over to me okay and he tries to act smart a little bit he thought about like you know like accelerating and making him you know like lose his aim but he's like ah i'm a way more better like a person than that i have a good aim you want to test it out and he hands him over the thing <laughs> and pulls the trigger it's just a party thing you know that the one fake pistol that he uses now okay now here lupan uh he probably sees what is in it and uh, tells Jigen what that is. The Carnet Noah, the black notebook. Okay, the thing holds the details of every misdeed and crime committed and covered by the French police's top brass. Sounds like a godsend for internal affairs. In, if the stuff in this went public, forget the director general of the national police. The entire uh, interior minister would be just over. So that's why they're trying to get it. And uh, yeah, now obviously the question pops up in Rupan's head. Why does Gaston get mixed up in this? And uh, yeah, now on the other side, we see Albert working on his uh, watch. And the guy, that guy comes in and he's like, oh, Rupan left Paris. And he's like, don't worry, like, you know, it's all part of the plan. He's going to come to me sooner or later. Which makes sense because, you know, like, he was going to get to know that Albert has sent him, sent this to him. So they go to Gaston's place and it's like a, like, you know, like not many people are there. And uh, he ends up asking like a, like a lady in the diner about Gaston and he's, she's like, oh, he's dead. And they go to the cemetery, the grave in front of the grave, sees, and as soon as he sees the grave, He's like, okay, the person who and like you know who was disguising as Gaston told me that when I die, like you know, say a prayer. And he looks at the Bible properly, and the name Albert is there. And Jigen asks, like, who is this Albert? And he's like the last guy I even wanted to see. So that means Rupan knows this guy. So there you go. Okay, everything is clear now. You know, like I said, like you know, the 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 style of this uh like you know this art. It's they're going to put out some information that we're going to get revealed later on and little by little we'll make connections to it that's why i was a little bit confused at the beginning but everything's clear now so i'm going to give a little summary what basically happened gaston died uh, this guy albert uh tried to test something he took uh, gaston's disguise went to rupan gave him the uh, bible and like you know like i told him to if i die play like you know I, read a prayer from there also told him i need something from you my grand uh, like you know that uh, that uh, picture i need it from you rupan goes and here's another as soon as he gets his hands on the picture from mr b uh, the police you know like the dgse they they obviously get scared because there's all that stuff into it the black notebook is inside it try to get it from rupan fails you know and uh, and, and at the same time uh, uh, Albert also gets to know who is involved in this, that DGS is involved in this and he gets to know that and he's like alright so they are the one involved in this and uh, at the same time uh, Rupan is also suspicious as to what's going on, tries to go and find out what's up with the whole Gaston situation, gets to know he's dead and then also gets to know that Albert is the one who was the one with the disguise and that's how this whole thing started. So, alright. So there you go. That's it. That was my reaction to episode number um, six and seven of Rupan the Third Part Five. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out.
that's it thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode uh two more episodes of rupan the third until then goodbye and have a nice day